All right, CS 2024, day two, coming yeah. to an end. Guess who I'm interviewing? <laughs> Even from <laughs> Raspberry, Raspberry Pi. Pi. There we are. So great to see you, man. I am a fan as well, just like Nico. And I got to tell you, I, I know that your user base is unreal. And I want to know why you're pumped, why you're here. Why are you at CES? Well, I, so I came to CES 12 years ago in the, so that was eight weeks before we shipped the first Raspberry Pi. And I've actually not been to CES since. Oh. Um, and there's, <laughs> you know, when I say that, there's been this huge evolution yeah, since. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, we've gone from no Raspberry Pis to I think we're at about 56 million. We should have about mm -hmm. 56 million Raspberry Pi since I was at CES last. So I thought it was a good time to come back. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the guys, so Sam and Chris, who've been here all week, they were telling me that the big change that's happened since they were at CES, certainly before the pandemic, you, if you were at CES in 2019, 2020, what you'd see is enormous numbers of Raspberry Pis out there on the floor being used for prototyping, being yep. used as in test harnesses, being used for prototyping products. The big thing that's changed since then is there are even more Raspberry Pis out there and they're being used in production. Right? Exactly. So what we're seeing is this evolution, particularly, I think this is a lot of this is driven by Compute Module 4. Mm -hmm. um, you're seeing people actually going, and that's really the aspiration. Yeah, we're, we don't want to sell. Yeah, well, we, we, want to be, we want to be helpful, right? So we want, to, we want people to use Raspberry Pis for whatever they want to use Raspberry Pis for. But our aspiration is that people stay with us, not just for prototyping, but all the way through to production. And this is the CES where you see that's really starting to happen. It's finally gelling. Yeah, I, I, I get you and I, I fully agree. And I'm not an engineer, and I'm not a computer expert, so you know that's my full disclosure. But I, mean, I have to say, I'm, I'm a recovering engineer. I mean, I, I'm a regretfully recover. I don't wish to recover. Um, I don't have. Yeah, you know, one of the typical things for me is that we built this amazing toy. I mean, right. a Raspberry Pi is just one of the. It's the. You know, I would have given my right arm, my left arm for 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 for, a, for one of these things for a thing, a tenth the power of a Raspberry Pi one. You know, uh, that would make it, if it was a tenth of the power of Raspberry Pi 1, that would make it a 1500th of the power of a Raspberry Pi 5. I, I, I would have given my, my, my right arm for one of those when I was a kid. Yeah. So I built the toy that I always wanted, and I run, I spend my time running the Raspberry Pi company. I don't spend my time playing, playing with the toy I built. But, you know, oh. I was an engineer once. That's one of the downfalls of leading the company. But yeah. let, me, let, me, let me pivot a little bit. So one of the things that we've developed recently, which I feel you guys are getting pretty excited, is this thermally conductive polycarbonate. And why am I getting excited about it doesn't matter. I want to hear why you think it might make a difference for your users. Well, it's fascinating, right? I mean, you know, we used to the idea of plastic pretty much as being an insulator, right? A thermal insulator. Um, as Raspberry Pi's have got more powerful over the years, they've also become more thermally conductive. Uh, more thermally Sorry. Well, they have become more they, thermally. They, they, but, they've, but, become, they've become more thermally generating. Yes. And in order to keep the heat under control, they've had to become more thermally right. conductive. So you look at the design of a Raspberry Pi PCB. Now, you, if you hold a Raspberry Pi 1 and you hold a Raspberry Pi 4 or a Raspberry Pi 5 in your hand, you can tell what we did, right? Which is we packed the middle of that object with copper. Right, so yeah, every so, layer mm -hmm. of that PCB is plated to within an inch of its life. The wonderful, um, I think, is it two ounce per square foot? The, I, I love these these kind of these wow. these wonderful measurements. I believe that's seventy microns in in in, okay. in, mo in modern units, right? So you know these things are plated up as hard as you can to get as much heat as you can away from the. Um, away from the CPU. Uh, on the big product, you want to get heat away from the CPU. You want to get to actually to the connector shells because you have the, um, the, the, the metal around the USB. Um, actually, an HDMI cable will sink a hell of a lot of heat uh, if you can just get the heat across the HDMI, uh, the HDMI socket. So an enormous amount of thermal engineering goes mm -hmm. into the product. What's been fascinating looking at the, the uh, Covestro-based um, uh, plastic solution is that you're putting plastic, there are compute module, there are compute module faults out there. You're putting plastic on top of the product, and I'm thinking, well, that's going to cause the temperature of the product to go you're up. You're gonna fry. And it makes the temperature of the product go down. Right, right. Um, and that's something, and you know what's really fascinating is it's able to do that without interfering with the uh, the Wi-Fi performance. Because you're gonna think, okay, right, okay, that, yeah, that's, that's an good. incredible thing to do with plastic. But what you're gonna have done basically is to make the thing electrically conductive. Mm -hmm. And if you make the thing electrically conductive, then it's gonna short out the E-field. Uh, and and you're going to get the radio. And so it's interesting that, I mean, there are, I know that you do have ones which are electrically conductive, right. but that you have a middle ground, these kind of, some of these additives, which get almost all the thermal performance of the electrically conductive design, uh, but without interfering with the, with, the, with the radio. And I am super pumped because, again, I feel, I've seen it in so many, let's call them IoT, which in my lingo is intelligence of things. Mm -hmm. Things become yeah, intelligent, yeah, yeah, not yeah, internet so. of things. There are so many that's of very them modern. That's very modern. That's the, uh, the AI, AIoT thing, you know, the yeah. AIoT cottage. 
It's a very opportunity rich environment. Well, you know, we're super excited about, you know, what, you know, we, you thought, think about what is Raspberry Pi enabling people to do. Exactly. It's enabling people to deploy intelligence into the world at a much higher density than you could do with higher cost legacy platforms. That's super exciting. On the edge. Yeah, and on the edge. And, you know, we are, you know, naturally, it's like, it's nice to go win sockets. The idea of winning sockets is great. Um, in practice, what we're doing because of the price performance point, we're creating sockets. We're creating opportunities to do compute, positive ROI opportunities. Is to do computer. If you, you know, two ways to the two ways to win an ROI argument, right? Yep. You can increase the return or you can reduce the investment. If you reduce the investment, you vastly increase you even a little bit reduction in the investment, vastly increase and you you know the capital investment and the yep. running cost. Yep. Um, you know you vastly increase the number of available sockets, and so we're creating these sockets and we're taking these sockets, and it's super exciting. I am pumped, and I have to say to the people that are watching, stay tuned. Hold on to your seats. It's going to be a wild ride. Yeah. Thank you, Evan. No, thank you very much indeed. Enjoy the rest of the show. Take care. Cheers.